My name is Jason J. Rock Houston. You guys are listening to an interview being done for Under Your Influence tonight, and it's my great pleasure to be speaking with um, lead singer Rod Ravers from a great um, Arizona-based uh, Rod Stewart tribute band. How are you doing tonight, Rod? Good. Thanks, Jason, for your call. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. No, thank you. So um, I guess the best place to start off with is um, if you could share with us um, how you first got into the music of uh, Rod Stewart and became a fan. Um, I met him as Lex Rod, and I've always been admired of his work and his talents, his craft. And about 12 years ago, I started doing a little karaoke on the side, and uh -huh. realized I had a uh, special talent, and, and realized that it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the, the response to the crowd, and we were able to take that transfer to, uh, it within the 12 years into not just a lot of weddings and birthday parties and surprise uh, events, and of course, a lot of charity, but also this awesome uh, Rod Younger's band now. Well, wow, and now let me ask you, Rod. Um, had you, had you um, like a lot of these guys doing the tribute band scene, um, had you been in other bands before doing your own original thing, or is this kind of the first band you've been a part of? No, this, this is my first band I've been in. I've worked with other guys uh, playing gigs and doing uh, front vocals for other groups, and maybe just a song or two or a little drop-in type thing, you know, at a bar or a uh, special occasion at a wedding or thing. but this, uh, this band that we have now is just incredible, just the guys are so gifted with so much talent. They just really bring it. It's amazing. Wow, how, how amazing is that? Because, again, a lot of the guys I talked to, they've been in another band. So when you first put this band, band together, how exciting was that for you, you know, um, you know doing your very first show and, and prep, prepping, getting the band prepped to, you know, for doing that first show? Because I imagine, imagine it must have been very exciting. Oh, it was, uh, it was magical. Uh, when we first got together, we just wanted to do, like, maybe three, three songs together. We just thought, okay, let's just play these first three. So we picked on Maggie Mae, Hot Legs of Forever Young. Yeah. And I looked over the guys, and open line, the opening, opening verse came on. And I looked over the guys, and they were just all in awe. And they just smiling, and they could not believe it. And the comment was, where have you been? Where have you been hiding? And yeah. uh, it was pretty magical. And you knew that we had something special that time. Now let me ask you, um, when, when you first put together the band, um, you, you know, Rod and the Young Turks, I, I was curious, um, what was this? Did you get this project together because you, you you had people telling you, "Hey, man, you look and sound so much like Rod Stewart," or um, or, or what? How did this all come together? Um, just I've always had my hair a certain way. I've always kind of gone my own grumpy, so to say, and uh -huh. I like the unique and different. <laughs> and I realized I had a gift of talent. I've seen on stage like she does, and uh, I've watched his video tapes. I've, I've studied his movements, uh -huh. and then I put, I put it all together for the show. I realized, wow, I love the music, I love what it's presenting, I like the, the presentation, how it's uh, performed on stage, and then to be back by this awesome band, and it can bring a lot of joy to people, and a lot of uh, great memories, and, and just have a blast, just have a good time, that's amazing, you just have fun. Yeah, yeah, because you know, um, you know, I think a lot of times when you do a tribute band, you got to have a little niche, and I think definitely one thing you got going for you, Rod, is the fact that, um, you know, I, um, I can only think of you, maybe um, one other guy, you know, down here in L.A. where I'm from, and you know, maybe a couple in Vegas um, that are actually doing doing Rod Stewart. I mean, it's it's like, um, you know, there's a hundred there's a hundred different. I can think of at least a hundred different Led Zeppelin, AC/DC tributes. So you have that going for you. I, I was just curious, as a guy that pays tribute to Rod Stewart, are you surprised there aren't more more guys paying tribute to Rod right now? Uh, yeah, because he's such a fine gentleman, and he's such uh, he has such a wide range of music that we can choose from. I uh, mean, classic standards. We do we dip into the smoothie doozy music. We dip into the rock and roll, the hard scene. We yeah. go back into faces, which is always a classic and always a pull for the crowd. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, I'm really I'm really kind of surprised, but I think it's I think it's a special, unique talent. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's I think it's what we do. And if you ever see the show, you'll see. Wow, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I see. That's what. I think the man himself would be very proud. Yeah, and you know, um, Rod Stewart himself, like you said, he, he's got a very eclectic um, catalog of music. I mean, if you go back to the stuff like from the 70s, that's a little more, got a little more of a rock and heavier edge, and then there's some, you know, um, ballad, more ballad type stuff he does, some softer rock. Um, are you a fan of it all, or um, is there one era that you particularly gravitate more towards? I, I've always been a big fan. Uh, I've always liked his music, but I would say the early 80s is always my favorite stuff. Uh -huh. I mean, when he does Kirby Young, when he does Infatuation, when he does Do You Think I'm Sexy, when he does uh, Rhythm of Heart, Downtown Train, those are great years for him. Um, passion is, is incredibly off the charts. I mean, everything is just is so awesome, but it's also great, Jason, the difference is Ula Laz, the Stay With Me, uh -huh. you know, I mean, all the, all the wonderful music, and then, and then change it up to the crowd and take them on his vocals to ride. 
that they do or haven't told you lately or, you know, something else in that, in that manner. It's just really, really tremendous stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, it, it's it's crazy you bring up the faces because that's, like, the first thing he ever did, you know, that and the Jeff Beck group. And um, a lot of that stuff, you know, um, has gone over, gotten really overlooked. And a lot of people think, you know, Rod Stewart's just this, um, you know, solo guy, solo guy. But, um, like, I... Um, um, I, I heard a version of like "Stay with Me" by Def Leppard, and they really, you know, rocked it up a, a bit. But um, you know, Rod is um, so how um, doing Rod Stewart? What's that like for you doing all these different types of music? I mean, your your voice must get uh, quite a workout during a performance. Yeah, it, it does. Uh, I'm a little hesitant because I also fly for a major airline carrier, uh -huh. and uh, you know, going back and forth with the uh, trips and, and uh, obviously the uh, the. Uh, a lot of different conditions in both areas where I, I live and where I transfer from, you know, go back and forth. Um, but yeah, it's, it's constant. Take care of the voice, take care of the vocal cords, watch uh, you know, what you're hearing. Uh, I tell you that you guys got me swearing to that uh, honey and hot water. I mean, they got, they got me to that through pretty good. But, uh, you know, you just, you just take care of it because that is my instrument. That is, they have their instruments, I have mine. But when I bring, when I bring the table, it's, it's my fair share of the bargain, and I think we have a really nice. Uh, of, of what we do on stage and the guys just feed off each other we just have a great time it's a really fun show you gotta see it Jason yeah, you know, one thing I really enjoy about tribute bands like like what you guys do, Rod, is, um, you know, um, well, well, of course you got to play the big hits like Maggie May and um, those those other tunes you were mentioning earlier. But um, I, I came across some great uh, Rod Stewart cuts myself that I, I would say are maybe some deep cuts. I love stuff like also um, Killing of Georgie and um, I Was Only Joking. Um, do you guys ever throw in some of the deep cuts uh, during your set? We, we do. We, we, we're starting now with a lot of different things. Um, we're trying out now with I'm Losing You, which is a great song and a lot of fun to do. Yeah. A lot of riff in there. Uh, ooh la la, we take ooh la la to a whole new dimension and it really sounds great. And, and we play with it, we tweak it, and uh, our opening scene this Friday night here at Blues Bar in Phoenix will be smoking with Stay With Me and you should hear the beginning of this. It just goes your way. That's the next and start the party right there. Yeah. And, and, and we take it to, we take uh, Maggie May to a rock hit. Yeah. You know, and they like to tonight and yours and Fascination Blocks. Uh, this is a heart of mine. Full uh, round, fell in love. He did a little touch of that with Alvin Bishop, and, and we take that to a new level. And again, the, so, the guitar solo on the others, uh, just incredible. Just people get ready, just back and stuff with just be it all with what we bring to the table in that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, um, I, I got to ask you, um, Arizona, where, you, uh, where you're based out of, is there much of a tribute scene there these days? There is. There's quite a few uh, tribute bands here, and um, we played side by side with Best Shots, uh, the Pat Benatar group, which was very good, and we enjoyed working with them. Uh, at Blues, this Friday night, August, October 9th, we had uh, tag up with um, uh, Hunt, and those folks had quite a following, and they're very good. And then uh, November 20th, we're tagged up with Aaron Smite. Uh, oh, wow. Molly and his gang, and I tell you, it, it just never ends. I mean, but the talent that's out there. And these guys just have fun, and we're, we're feeding off each other, and it's just nice. It really is a small world because everybody talks to each other and getting a lot of great ideas and a lot of uh, feeds and leads and whatnot, you know, kind of thing. Because everybody's looking for exposure, everybody's looking for a chance to just play and have a good time and have fun and, and show the talents. And let me let me ask you, like, um, the other guys in the band, are these guys that you... Um that, that you've known from when you were growing up, or these guys you met, you know, through um, putting ads out? No, no uh, we've been here in Arizona for about 11 years, and I just met these guys when we moved here, but uh, Brian and myself, we're both from Michigan area, and uh, a couple of guys on the band worked together at uh, a Target, the store distribution center. Oh, cool. Um, but we, we all had things going on on the side, uh, the guys are in other bands, uh, they all had friends and family and kids and whatnot. Uh, our bass guitarist is very involved in his church, and uh, our drummer is fantastic, and he's got a lot going on with all his activities and stuff, but everybody is just uh, so busy, but to me, how we all stay focused and committed to this, this project, and we know we have something special, so we're all kind of, you know, taking another level here. Well, so, so you guys have been doing this like 11 or 12 years now, so, um, you know, you've had some level of success, uh, otherwise you wouldn't still be able to, still be doing it, you know, 12 years after the facts, facts so, um, yes. You know, what, what do you attribute that to, just um, building fan, building the fan base up? Um, yeah, a lot of it is just uh, that that's a part of it, and there's being uh, dedicated to this and knowing that it takes a lot of work. We're not all made the same mold. We're not all going to be in the same frame of mind. And uh, sometimes, you know, we have different ideas that don't quite click, and we try something else, we work on things. But everybody's very respectful of everybody's idea. 
uh, let's try this, oh, this didn't work, I can't stop saying that. We are speaking things, we're trying things, every time we bring something to the table, uh, it, it, it amplifies what we're trying to do. And um, again, you know, it's wonderful working with this group of guys. We brought out our keyboardist lately, he was our newest addition, and Jaster is just, I mean, he's, he's so gifted. The band is so gifted what he brings. Wow, wow. Uh, by adding his, adding his dimension to the band, that really opened things up, and now we have a whole can of worms to dip into. And again, the, the forte of songs, Lost in You, huh. and um, uh, the Young Turks, and, and, and some guys have all luck. I mean, we're, we're adding a whole new dimension of sound, and of course, what he brings to the table. It's just awesome, and it's nice, and uh, yeah. But, but we all get along really well. We all respect each other, we all have great ideas, and yet we all you know, manufacture our own personal lives and our own personal schedules. And so, so let me ask, let me ask you, um, Rod. Now, um, you guys have been doing this twelve years, so I, know, I, I guess you're at a point where you know these songs pretty well. But do you still have to get together from time to time and rehearse these songs, like before you have a show, or you pretty much? Um, oh, sure, sure, sure. I've been I've been doing uh, Rod for about twelve years. The guys, the band, and myself, as a nucleus, have been on board for about two, two and a half years. But there are times still where we have to because we're constantly tweaking things as far as intros and how many. Uh, verses and choruses, that kind of stuff. Absolutely, there's always something worked on. Never get yourself to the point where you think you're spoken that you don't have it. To, uh, you have to work on, it, on perfecting things. But no, uh, it's still camera out things. We're trying different things. We're, uh, yeah, it's never, never a done deal. Um, you know, it's, that, that's yeah. so, so that everybody has. Yeah, and so let me ask you, Rock, because you're saying in the beginning of the interview that, um, unlike a lot of guys who I've talked to, that um, you weren't really much of a singer before you put together this band. You said you, from time to time, would get up um, on stage with some of your friends and their other bands and kind of, you know, sing a tune or, t a tune or two with the, their band. But um, would you say um, having this band, the Young Turks, has kind of helped you to morph into the singer you are now? Yeah, when I was growing up, I was in a lot of musicals and plays uh, uh, in high school or not, and I always had a thing for entertaining on stage. I never had any uh, worries or uh, butterflies, that kind of thing. Uh, my mom always would say that you're natural, but <laughs> she said you just had that gift. And so now I'm able to sell that, and I'm back by this career band, and it is this great talent. And then I just you know do my thing and, and do what else to do, and we, we make it work. And like I said, it all comes together. It's really something else. But, I, I do have a lot of uh, background behind you know, as far as singing and dancing, so that helped me to be up on stage and not get any PPGBs in front of people. And it sounds like it sounds like you said you're, you're not you're not that shy of a guy or anything, and you have no tr trouble being the front man. But um, w was it any different for you being a guy that um, went from working behind the you know backstage behind the scenes to being up in front, or um, do you just love doing it all? No, I, 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 everybody's important. I, I, I know exactly where my role is. I know exactly what I'm supposed to, to do. And, you know, our punker man is, is superior. Our videotape man, uh, video photographer, he's awesome. Everybody, our song guys, I mean, everybody's on board. He's important, and we appreciate that, all the hard work and the effort. A lot of time off the clock they put in. Our uh, studio that we practice at is called Perfect Chinese Studios here in Phoenix. And Mike has just been a dear friend of ours, and he likes us. He knows that we're he's not just a, a client, a business transaction, but a friend. And that really helps because we have a good report with them, and uh, he's been so wonderful to us, and we've been ever so grateful. I love yeah, everybody's yeah. important. Everybody, everybody's uh, played a major role in this thing. Yeah. I, I love, I love that ad kind of family um, environment, family attitude, and yeah, I'm going to share something with you here, Rod. Um, Casey, you've been wondering, you know. Um, part of the reason I started interviewing um, guys like yourselves um, that are in the tribute bands is, um, number one, I'm a music fan myself. I've been to a lot of these tribute shows and, and enjoyed them immensely. I can't tell you um, that I've seen a bad one yet, although I'm sure there are a couple of them out there. But um, my experience has been pretty a pretty positive one. I look at this like um, rock and roll theater. And um, I really enjoy the bands that do like what you guys are doing, where, where you know, in your case, you dress the part of Rod Stewart. You try to look as much like him and sound as much like him as possibly can because like you were sharing with us um, in the beginning of the interview um, a lot of times you know you have people come up to you after a show and tell you oh man you took me back to the first time I heard a Rod Stewart song on the radio the very first time I seen the man in concert I mean that's got to be a great feeling yeah yeah it is it really is, is nice because people make some wonderful comments and they always pick on certain things whether you hear or that song or your outfit um, you know, just everything. I mean, they just really pick on the key essentials that I work so hard on, and, and of course, the music is nice. And use the emotions, get involved in songs. So don't just sing the words, just, you know, back it with some emotion, back it with some feeling. Mm. And I learned that from, from God Himself. Uh, but it, it really is, is a pleasure and honor to do what we do, and like I said, you know, 
there's, there's so much fun. I can't express to you, Jason, how much great time we're having. I know that we can keep going with us. And yes, we are very grateful uh, for everybody around us. Uh, it's a lot of work, and we keep staying with it and, and keep uh, trying to perfect it and, and, and bring our game every time we got it. So. Yeah, yeah, and see, that, that's another point um, I'm trying to make in doing these interviews, Rod, is, is like you said, um, I've been to several of these shows, you know, myself, and, and I've seen all the hard work and dedication that goes into putting on a great uh, tribute show like what, what you do. And, and the thing with it is, I, I've, I've also heard that there's this huge misconception out there by uh, a, a huge percentage of the population that believe um, uh, these musicians are playing tribute bands, they're, they're just failed musicians that couldn't uh, make it doing their own thing. But but first of all, i, I got to share with you, you're talking to a guy that's not a musician himself now. I'm a huge music fan, a music lover, but, um, you know, um, so right there, I'm talking to a guy that can get up and, and play these Rod Stewart songs like you do. I could never do that. I mean, I can't even strum a guitar, let alone sing. So, you know, I tip my hat to a guy that can do what you do, you know, and um, yeah. it's more than just putting on a suit because, again, not everybody could look like Rod Stewart. I mean... Some people might try to look like Rod Stewart and look like a clown, but a guy that can do what you do, you know, that takes a certain level of talent. Even just to learn the guy's songs and get up on stage and, and play those songs. So, uh, you know, and like I said, um, very first time I seen a Guns N' Roses tribute out here called Hollywood Rose, the, the band, especially the lead singer, he looks so much like Axl Rose from 1987. I've seen, uh, seen this band at the Whiskey. I had to pinch myself and remind myself, oh, oh this is a tribute show. This is actually... Guns and Roses, but you know, after the show, I thought to myself, "This is probably as close as I'm ever going to get to seeing Axel and Slash uh, play on stage again." But it was that good. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and so um, I, I do think there's a there, there's a purpose for for what you guys do. You know, it's entertainment, and, and see, that's the thing. You're not trying to fool anybody that you're Rod Stewart. This is a tribute show. You're paying tribute to your hero. So um, I think it's all you know. It's all in the it's all in the fun of it. You know. And when I'm on stage, I get the crowd involved, I get them participating with me. They know these words, they know these songs. I get them singing along with me verbatim. We get them entertained. Uh, when we do hot legs, we want to make sure that the ladies of the hot legs are, are fronting each other. Um, everybody knows Maggie May verbatim, word for word, so yeah. I sing along with them. They, they, they can sing to me. I mean, I can hold the microphone and just let them knock the whole song out. Um, but yeah, it's, it's amazing. But you know, there's more to it than just, like you say, just get up there and hold a mic and just stand there singing. But you gotta look the part, you gotta feel the part. I mean, character. Uh, I am Rod, and, and it just it is a pleasure and an honor. And like I said, we have so much fun with it. And when we get asked to do charities, when we get asked to do, uh, you know, the organization mm -hmm. uh, honors, that's a win win deal. Um, we have a lot of things coming down the pipe as far as future shows and just more exposure. But this is this kind of stuff. This is what we need to help us out. That uh, we need to get more uh, people know about how good we are. Yeah. Now, um, you know, and again, um, see, I call this rock and roll theater, and I find what what you guys do very to be very entertaining. And I'll tell you why because. If this was just um, you and a group of like four or five other guys getting up on stage in your jeans and t-shirt and giving us an evening of Rod Stewart music, um, it wouldn't be the same show, if you know what I mean. And so I, I dig a show like what you guys do, and, and, and um, you know, it makes it that much more um, you know, entertaining or meaningful. And, and like I said, it's, it's not just like say the same with the notes and the words. You've really got to feel the part. You've got to be involved. The accent comes out. The hair is in perfect form. The outfits are phenomenal. I, I mean, some people say, how do you wear outfits like that? Yeah. I just, you know, that's, that's my, I'm in my, I don't, I don't know, I'm in my, I'm in my skin. I feel very couple with that. Now let me ask you, typically, <laughs> yeah, typically when you have a gig, um, do you, do you come and, you know, dressed up as Rod or um, do you kind of get dressed up backstage? What's, what's your typical routine? Yeah, I uh, very carefully show the breathing um, and just take it easy and actually wind down and, and uh, make sure you're well rested before. I want to make sure I have lots of energy on stage. But when I come, I like to like to meet the crowd, uh, see what's going on. I ask the guys if they need help, anything set up. They always tell me no, just back off and let me let me take care of it. Okay. So uh, they do the thing. I'm I'm just getting ready. I'm getting the hair ready, the outfit. I'm, I'm going over in my mind, um, you know what all the cues are and everything. But when the show starts, it's, it's phenomenal. The accent, the hair, the outfit, the energy, uh, all the gyrations, all the movements, and the short kick of soccer balls. We got it down. And how long does it take, typically take you to get, you know, get in costume and, you know, fully made up and everything? Oh, 30, 40 minutes. Oh. Uh, the wife helps me a lot with the hair, gets me all prepped and ready and tied a whole bit. And, but uh, I always like to wear a really awesome outfit that's, that's definitely uh, a crowd pleaser and attention getter. And uh, that's, that's the key thing. And, and, uh, 
the guys make sure their hair is in true form. So away we go with it. But, uh, it's about 30, 40 inches. Wow, wow, cool, cool, and and, and um, now, um, of course, Rod Stewart looks a little um, different um, than you than what you portray him as as these days. But um, you know, everybody knows who you're portraying. My question here is, um, have you ever been mistaken for a man? You know, because like I, I was looking at some of the photos on your Facebook page, and to me, I mean, that, that's Rod Stewart right there. <laughs> yeah, it's it's amazing how he's uh, you know mastered and dedicated and tried very hard to work on things. I mean. You know, there's always room for for room improvement and critiquing that kind of thing. But uh, uh, yeah, we've tried very hard to get it all down pat, and, and we're still working. It's, a, it's still going for I mean, we're not slowing down. I mean, we're just uh, going with it. But I, I sure hope you see the show, Jason, because it's really something. Yeah, maybe to maybe one day if I yeah. when I get. To- when I get a chance to come to Arizona, I definitely w- would like that. But um, what I was asking is, like, um, if you've ever been out before a show, like, walking around, you know, maybe in front of a club or something, and somebody actually came up and thought you were Rod Stewart? Happens a lot, yes. Uh, a lot of times we go to, to see Roddy up in Vegas. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, we have a lot of times we go to the restaurants, uh, quite, quite a freak show, so to uh-huh. say. Um, but it's a lot of fun, and you got to play it with less worth, and, and people are always looking for you to stop and get a picture with them, and, and they're going to tell you, you know, I love that song, I love that uh, fit, uh, can I get a picture with you, or not? It's always nice, and you got you got to act professionally, you got to be grateful, and you know, those people are, are your fans, and you got to acknowledge that, and uh, we, we can become quite a following base here with yeah. our shows and, and what we're presenting here, so uh, it's a class act, and... Uh, and yeah, and talking about um, you know building up your fan base, I was curious. Uh, I mean, um, like, like you said, you got a Facebook page. Are, are you all surprised at how many people contact you just because you guys have a Facebook page? I mean, I, again, we're talking about a tribute band, but but what I, what I found in um, doing these interviews myself and you know some, through the research is you know, a lot of the tribute bands. I mean, it's, it's big time business, and, and they're getting quite huge. You know, get to give their own little fan bases here. Yeah. I'm, I'm amazed because I'm not a, a real big uh, person in social media or anything, but I realize that that to make an exposure. But I'm, uh-huh. I'm quite amazed at all the wonderful comments that are made on there, Jason, on our Facebook page. Uh, great people taking great photos. Um, one show we did, this gentleman came up and showed me on his camera phone. The great photo he took, I said, wow, that's a postcard right there. That's, uh-huh. that's one of a kind. Um, but people are, are, are making so many nice uh, comments about what we do, and thank you for doing that song. Next time you have to do the gig, okay, can you do this song for me? And, and you know, we get special requests, we get a lot of following. Um, a lot of people ask me, where's your next, next show? Where's it at? I'm going to follow you, because they clearly, you know, they do Southern California, but we do Arizona, whatever. Uh-huh. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's, it's incredible. It's really, um, it's really something to see how it take off. And do and you guys typically, like, um, pretty much just play um, locally, or do you ever um, get a chance to, I think you mentioned Las Vegas, but do, do you get a chance to play um, out of state much? I'm um, quite a few shows in New York, Dallas, Miami, oh, wow. Chicago, and L.A., because obviously with the airline uh, situation, it, it presents a lot of stuff, try to tell and contact there. Um, with the band so far, most of the games have been locally here in the future, but uh, boy, hold, hold on to your shoes because it's going to start to get crazy here because uh, the leads are coming in. Yeah. We've got some very nice, wonderful potential uh, clientele coming to us that are saying, hey, I want you in Southern California, I want you here, I want you in Vegas. Want you. So you never know, you never know. Yeah. yeah, like like I said, you know, like you, you were mentioning some casinos, that's becoming a big thing for a lot of these tribute bands, and and I think definitely, you know, Rod, what you got really working for yourself, besides the fact that you look so much like the man and sound like him, is like I said, I can only think off the top of my head maybe like one or other Rod Stewart tributes that I'm aware of, you know, you know, between Vegas and you know L.A. and you know there in Arizona where you are. So that's the thing, especially in Arizona, you're probably one one of only uh, maybe the only Rod Stewart tribute out there. So you definitely got that going for you. Yeah, it's, it's like I said, you know, and I want to make sure I carry the uh, the reputation at stake of professionalism on stage. I want to make sure I carry it well and that, that he would be proud and, uh, you know, showcase my talent for the guys. And, uh, you know, like I said, um, it's just it's just really an honor. I'm, I'm trying to be very humble about this, but it's really an honor to do what I do. Yeah, and do you know if um, if Rod Stewart himself or any of his, anybody from his organization is aware of what you guys are doing? Uh, yes, I've informed our smarter which is Rod Stewart's bank club present, Marcy Bonsky, and I let her know uh-huh. what we do and how we do this. And, but uh, uh, obviously Rod and his, and his, uh, his uh, corporation, uh, his, his national team know. Um, and, and, you know, every time we go see Rod up in Vegas, he always salutes, uh, he waves, 
Um, last time we were up there, Ruby, his daughter, was singing Trevor Young with him, and she slipped out and saw me with an awesome jacket and an awesome outfit on and, and saw the hair, and, you know, and, um, you know, a lot of times we cross paths with the kids, and, and of course, me playing for a uh, uh, major carrier out in Los Angeles. Uh, I see, you know, a lot of the family on occasion, and, uh, of course, I've had Rachel on. Uh, yeah. A couple of times, but it's it's really neat. It's really uh, like I said, it's it's really really awesome. And, yeah, yeah, that's that's it's, 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 yeah. really good. You know, so, yeah. That, that's cool. And the re reason I brought that up is, is um, because I know a lot, a lot of great stories I've heard um, from talking to some of these tribute bands. Um, I interviewed the lead singer, um, Swan Montgomery, from Led Zeppelin, which is a great uh, Led Zeppelin tribute out here in L.A. And he was telling me a story that um, when Led Zeppelin um, recorded that live DVD and CD uh, from a couple of years back, um, that Robert Plant was so impressed with this Led Zeppelin tribute out here that... Um, he invited the whole band to come see the, them record that show that night a couple of years back, you know, in London, oh, wow. which is like, you know, when, when you're getting, you know, you know when the, the when the real band is taking notice, that, that's like the ultimate pat on the back to me. <laughs> yep. yep. We would love to have that, Jason. We'd love to get an opportunity to do that. But we're also very respectful to Rob, his, his personal life and his business. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a business. And, and we try and make sure we understand the, the difference between the two. But how, how honorable would it be to to do something on stage with him or sing with him or have him yeah. at one of our shows to see what the, what the we bring uh, in our shows and how well we perform these songs because I think he did you say yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, my, my point of bringing this up, you know, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that, but my, my point of bringing it up is, is this: um, a lot of a lot of people, I'm talking about the general public now, write tribute bands off, and it, and it just amazes me the more more of you um, musicians that I talk to that, that are in these tribute bands. I hear so many interesting stories. Like another guy I talked to was um, a guitar player named Bart Walsh. He was the original guitar player in the Atomic Punks out here in L.A., which is a great. They're probably the premier Van Halen tribute, one of the first ones out here in L.A. And um, he had my, he, he's, he's uh, met both Michael Anthony and David Lee Roth. And and you know I think in the early 2000s, um, David Lee Roth actually asked this guy, "Hey man, how would you like to be the guitar player in my solo band?" You know this is a guy who I guess obviously is a Van Halen fan, so he started his own little Van Halen tribute. He actually met the singer from Van Halen, gets an offer to join a solo band. It just to me, I mean, man, it doesn't get better than that. You know, you get to go and play in a band with your hero. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, we're gonna be out, huh? yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we would like that, and hopefully someday that'll happen. But right now we just. You stay the course, but we got to do what we have to present. We have to prove ourselves, and we are doing it. And of course, this Friday will be a good opportunity. We got many more coming on the pipe. Well, you know, like like I, I give you I, I give you credit for this, for this ride. Like you, you're telling me that you're um, you've been at this for 12 years, so you're obviously doing something right. I mean, if you didn't have people come to the shows, you wouldn't you wouldn't still be doing this 12 years after the fact. So you definitely made some kind of mark there, you know. So I, I just um, applaud you on that and say, um, you know, you know, keep it up. <laughs> Thank you. We will, we will keep working hard and perfecting this. And I said, it's a lot of fun. And, and to do what you enjoy and have a great time on the show and have a great time with the crowd and the fans, the fans that to come see you, I mean, that's it's an awesome, awesome experience. I mean, I mean see, that's, that's the thing. You know, you're getting to entertain the fans. You're getting a little fan base of yourself. And like you said, you know, it doesn't get much better. You know, having, you know at least, at least uh, you get to have this job that, you know, it doesn't suck. You, you get to do, do what you love doing. And, um... And, and the, the, you know, the last thing I'm going to say before we end this is, I mean, part of this, you know, you're you're a Rod Stewart fan yourself, so you're a guy that was in the audience, you jumped up on stage, you got your little Rod Stewart tribute now, and you are helping to keep the legacy alive, because, you know, even a few years, you know, down the line here, Rod Stewart may decide, okay, I'm going to retire, I'm not going to tour as much, and then there will be a real need for a band like you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, yeah. I mean, I mean, just just think about that. And then again, that there are, there is a, a percentage of your fan base that they might come to one of your shows because you know it's a little, it's not expensive. Does maybe does it cost hundred dollars a ticket to like it does to go see the real Rod Stewart? So you guys might just be the next best thing. Who knows? Yes, that's what we hope to do, and that's what we're working on. And uh, like I said, what we what we're bringing now is just flat out just just uh, so much fun. I mean, these guys. They make me feel really good, and they just, they bring it, and these solos, these riffs, these, these uh, keyboard intros, the drums, um, it's fantastic. It's really, I use the word magical, and I don't to to this whole thing, but it, it is magical, and it's fun. We're having a great time, we're enjoying the ride. Well, well, once again, I've been talking to um, Rod Rabbers, who's the lead singer from this great um, Rod Stewart tribute band based out of um, Phoenix, Arizona. You guys are called um, 
Rod, Rod and the Young Turks. Um, that, that's actually one of my favorite all-time Rod Stewart uh, songs, too, so I think that's a great um, name for the band. But um, thanks so much for taking time to do this, Rod. It's been great talking to you. And um, I'm not exactly sure when the interview will be going, probably sometime in early November, but the minute it goes up, I'll be sure to let you know. And then at that point, if um, you want to post on any of your sites, you're more than welcome to do so. But I, I promise I'll be in touch. And um, if you need anything down the line, um, um, please, please, I hope we can uh, stay friends and you know keep in touch, and maybe we can do this again. Absolutely, Jason. I really enjoyed this. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for doing this for us and the band. And I look forward to seeing you and I hope you check out our shows, too. Okay, I, I will de definitely do. I have every good chance to come to Phoenix, Arizona in the near future. But once again, Rod uh, Ravers, take care. And um, thanks so much for doing this. I really enjoyed the um, time you've given me. Thank you, sir. Have a good night. Thank okay, you. Okay, bye-bye.